In my previous video I had a quick look at this, it's an 01 XDM 3051 5.5 digit bench multimeter. As multimeters go um, it's not a cheap meter but for a 5.5 digit bench multimeter it's quite a reasonable cost and uh, I compared this in the previous video with my Agilent 34461A which is a 6.5 digit multimeter. And this stacks up fairly well. It's, the accuracy was uh, very good. Um, after the video had finished, I left this running for several hours and it didn't really drift. Um, but then there is, as you can probably hear, a very noisy fan in this. So at some point I will be modifying this to quiet it down. Um, in this video, we're just going to have a quick look inside. I'll take the cover off. And I also want to remove the bell and see if I can get these uh, rubber bumpers off the corner. They do appear like they're not moulded um, as an integral part of the cover, so these may well come out. Um, I prefer to do that because it then fits into my rack a lot better, and um, I don't like these uh, anyway. It's all right if it's on a bench like this, um, but I don't really use the meters like this, so I prefer to take these off if I can. So we'll switch this off, get the leads out and we'll get uh, the covers off and see what is inside. So firstly try and figure out how to get this apart. This is quite heavy, it's quite a nice thick case steel. On the back we've got serial auxiliary out. Haven't uh, got the text in quite the right place so it's partially covered up but not really a big deal. Um, Multi-voltage, uh, external fuse, LAN and USB. So this is the device USB, there is another USB on the front for data and firmware updates, that sort of thing. Uh, so the, the first thing is, it looks like the only screws that are on the outside are on the bell, there's two down here, and on the rear cover, there's one in each corner. So I'll get these four taken out, they're the most likely ones to give us access, and then I assume that this uh, rear section will just slide off. So. They are just standard screws. It's no one, um, at least I haven't seen a, a tamper or anti tamper sticker on this. So, whether they're expecting people to take these apart or they just don't care, I'm not sure. Um, but um, we'll see if we can actually get it apart. Okay, so that's the four screws taken out of the back. I can't see any more holding this on doesn't seem to want to come out, it may just be tight. Okay, yeah, so it's just a tight fit in there, so it's quite a good fit. So again, it's a testament to the build quality. The plastic moulding is a very good fit in the metal case, which is always a good sign. And one thing I can see now is that these do indeed come off. Very nice piece of design. I like it when the manufacturers make things easy for us and uh, it looks like these just slide out so I can refit them in the future if ever I want to. I really like that, that's a very nice touch. Someone's really been thinking there when they designed this. Good quality plastic. Um, it's obviously it's now flexible, we've taken it off, but it is good quality plastic and uh, very nicely made. So we'll see if we can get the metal cover off. Okay, that still isn't moving, so I suspect the screws that hold the bail on might be holding it, or there could be some screws hidden under this. We'll have a look. I want to take this off anyway. And yes, there are indeed some screws under here, so we'll get those taken out as well. And then hopefully the case will just slide off. And then when you look, the front bumpers will also slide out. I'm hoping they've done the same thing with those as they did with the ones on the back. So we'll try and slide the cover off, see if it comes off now. Okay, well, Yes, indeed, we can slide these off. So, as I said, it's a very nice uh, feature. I'm going to have to take the front cover off by the look of it to get them out. They are not really captive, but they are um, hitting against the metal case. So, I'll need to take the screws out. 
so that it, it releases the front cover. Now I can move this forward. I can't get it all the way out of course without disconnecting the wires but I just want it to move far enough so I can take these off. Okay that's all the bumpers removed. It's, I'm quite pleased that they came off. It makes it much uh, nicer to use this on a bench. And so well, I'm not going to disconnect all the wires. Um, there's nothing really on the front. Um, you can see the fan lead has popped out. These are quite short wires. But all that's on the front is the um, display and uh, sockets. There's nothing really uh, to see there anyway. So I'll just plug the fan back in. Okay, and so what we've got inside here is fairly simple. We've got the interface board at the back. That's just our uh, LAN interface. We've got an integrated uh, LAN controller there. Same with the RS-232 uh, and the USB. Um, flying lead going up to the external connections. So nothing uh, spectacular there. Uh, fairly simple uh, interface. There's nothing particularly complex there. These cables go through from the back to the front. Um, quite a simple board. We can see the um, divider resistors there, current sense, and uh, we've got some screening going on here. Uh, power supply in the corner of the board. Uh, lattice FPGA there in the corner, obviously doing all the uh, major control. And um, yeah, not much to see. We've got some relays for switching the ranges. There is some protection here, you can see on the input, so we've got some mobs and quite nice protection in there, so that's looking quite good. I can't really see much in the way of isolation in there, because it does uh, claim 1000 volts. Um, and also a bit suspicious about the thickness of the cables they're using for the current input. I'm sure they're adequate. I didn't really try any high current measurements but that's something I may well try doing. Okay so not really much to see in there. It's uh, very straightforward, very basic as we'd expect. Uh, there is another board over here which is just the mechanical uh, power switch. So we've got the mains coming in from the socket, goes through to this board. There is some isolation on here. Don't really know why considering that um, that's uh, mains in, mains out. Um, probably isn't really necessary but quite a nice touch that they've gone to the trouble to do that. Quite a large uh, transformer and we have another power lead. This may well be for the backlight for the display. Uh, okay so not much to see in there. It's uh, very basic. I thought I would uh, take a look. Now what I can see is a, uh, a potential for us to quiet this fan down. We can see that um, we've got two issues with this. Firstly it is very close, the fan blades are very close to the vent holes in the case and that always makes a lot of noise, in fact it's how some sirens work. Uh, so moving this away would help. It doesn't seem to do anything other than draw air in from the back side of the case. So it's just basically drawing air across. So the most likely approach I'll take to quieten this down we can either put a quieter fan in. Um, but what I generally do on something like this is I put a much larger fan in and have it rotate slowly and then just put some ducting in so the fan can sit at an angle. It will draw air up from the same direction so it will draw air in from this side, draw it across the board, up through the fan and then out through the duct to the original uh, port. And because it's rotating slowly it won't make much noise. It's best not to make them temperature controlled. Um, if they turn on and off then the fluctuation in temperature on the board 
uh, can cause um, accuracy issues. You want a constant airflow. It's not going to be a huge airflow with a small fan like this, so a large fan turning slowly uh, will be almost silent and will give us a good airflow. So, okay, nothing else to see in there really. It's uh, all very uh, basic, straightforward. And um, as I said, it's nice that uh, I could remove the bumpers. You may even have half a chance of repairing this if it goes wrong. So um, that's the inside of an 01 XVM 3051. And yes, it still works. And uh, now I've removed the bumpers, it will of course fit more comfortably into my rack. And of course, if ever I need to, I can refit these. So I don't know if it was intentional that these were removable, but it's very nice being able to do that without damaging the unit. And as I say, if ever I need to refit them, they'll just slide back in. Uh, also, I can refit the bell if ever I want to, but uh, as it is, it is a much neater way of fitting this into the rack. Okay, so that's it for this video. Not a detailed teardown, just a quick look inside. And um, if you do want a more in-depth review of this unit, then leave a comment. And in case you were wondering, that's how it now fits into the rack. You can see the purpose of removing the bell and the rubber bumpers.